Good morning, friends. We have started, uh, we will be starting in just a minute. We may have a good enough signal that you get the whole thing without pixelating. Hopefully we do, um, but bear with us. Maybe you can at least hear it and if you can't see it. Thanks so much for joining us this morning. We'll be starting in just a few moments. I've got a regular black one Thank at the you. church. I Oops. just forgot. Yeah. Thank you. We keep saying we're going to make a list. This time we really have to. Yeah. <laughs> Try it off. so to speak, our, our midsummer celebration of uh, being in ministry together as the RCA, the Riverside Church Association. So thanks so much for coming and joining us, and you know we'll have good fellowship and good food and, um, and all those things. Because you guys, you know, your pastors represent RCA, but you guys really are RCA. So we have some thank you notes that we'd like to share with you. Um, one is Dear Riverside Church Association, thank you so much for the opportunity to continue my education from Lexi Altweiser, and she uh, received one of our scholarships. And to the Riverside Church Association, thank you for your scholarship support giving students like myself an easier path to funding our education. I really appreciate it. With God's blessings, Kyla Reekin. <coughs> Dear, or thanks RCA, thank you for giving me your scholarship. I am so grateful for this opportunity. Thanks again, Becca Cody. So those were our scholarship um, appreciation and so those funds come from you guys and so thank you so much for uh, providing that for those who are going on with their education from our community and all the other things that it does which we'll we'll share with you a little bit later um, any other announcements from you guys from your churches or community ones that need to be brought up we do have worship tonight at 7 in the garden um, memory Garden next to the Oakland UMC and lunch there from 11 to 1 on Wednesdays for whoever wants to come for however long you can come. Okay, that's not it. Then we are going to uh, begin. Did we have a reader from the Christian church? <laughs> okay, I'll begin. Please join me. Before we, uh, before we start though, 
at our church, we kind of do some deep breaths because, first of all, it's kind of a struggle to get here, right? We're all hurrying to get done because we really would like to relax on Sunday morning. And, and all those things that take our minds, like, you know, making sure that the beans don't burn and, and all those kind of things so that we can have a good meal afterwards. So take a deep breath with me in and out. And one more time in. And as you lift that breath out, kind of let your shoulders drop back. Kind of relax your posture. <laughs> as you breathe in, breathe in that very essence of worship. All those things that God brings us to in our times of worship. And as you breathe out, get rid of all the distractions you have that keep you from worshiping on this morning. And now, please join me. One more thing. Oh, one more thing. Oh, yes. Do we have any extra bulletins, somebody that can share with somebody? Okay, pass them on over to the right. Awesome, I think we're covered. The other right. The other right, the other right. Oh, my right, your left. Yeah, so there'll be another couple coming here. So uh, just kind of keep an eye on that. If you've got extras, you can share. Thank you. Please join together in centering ourselves for worship. We acknowledge you, O oh God, as creator and as liberator. You are the one who brought the captives out of Egypt and delivered them from the oppression of slavery. You gave laws which shaped how people were to relate to you, to each other, and to the whole environment. You implored people to worship only you, knowing that whatever put in your place would become the object of idolatry, would become the priority of people's lives. In this time of worship, help us focus on you, O oh God, as the priority of our lives. Remind us of your steadfast love revealed so clearly in the new commandment of love, which Jesus disclosed with his life. And as he especially remembered in this period of Lent with his death, speak to us anew as we offer this prayer and our worship in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. Would you want me in our call of worship? In the days of Noah, God placed a rainbow in the sky as a sign of a covenant of God's love for all the earth. In the colors of the rainbow, we see the sign of God's grace for all creation. In the days of Moses, the words of God were written on tablets of stone as a sign of a covenant between God and all God's people. In the tablets of stone, we see the sign of God's hope for each to live in peace with God in the days of the prophet, God's promise to place a new covenant in our hearts. As, As members, members of the living body of Christ, we see the sign of God's promise among us. Now we will sing, open my eyes that I may see. Open my eyes that I may see, glimpses of truth.
Now let us pray. Liberating God, in love you have set us free. Free from slavery to sin and self. Free to know and love you. Free to follow and serve you. We praise you for your faithful love toward us and for the many ways you have demonstrated that love to us. We see your love in the natural world around us, in the sky, in the trees, in the rivers. We see your love in the gift of your commandments, the rules for living that guide, that guide us into right relationship with you and with the people around us. And we see your love in Jesus Christ, who lived and died to bring us life. Because we have experienced your love, we come before you with confidence, bringing our needs and the needs of our world. God, in your unfailing love, hear our prayer. We pray for those who live surrounded by violence, whether from war or political unrest, crime or domestic abuse. We pray for those who have been victims of violent crime and for those whose loved ones have been injured or murdered. God, in your unfailing love, hear our prayer. We pray for those who find themselves involved in crime, those caught up into gangs or prostitution, whether by choice or through coercion, those who have turned to crime to pay for their addictions, those who are imprisoned. God, in your unfailing love, hear our prayer. We pray for our homes and families, for parents juggling the responsibilities of work and family, for husbands and wives whose marriages are breaking down, for children chafing under parental authority or expectations, for men and women caught up in adultery or adulterous thoughts. God, in your unfailing love, hear our prayer. We pray for the many people in our world who do not yet know you and have not experienced the new life that comes from knowing Christ Jesus who continue to search for purpose and meaning. God, in your unfailing love, hear our prayer. Merciful God, give us strength and courage to keep your commandments, to live in faithful obedience to your will. Guard our hearts and minds from all that might distract us from living out our commitment to you. Help us to find our true worth in knowing you Our scripture this morning comes from the book of Exodus. Um, at Oakland UMC, we've kind of been running through a series and we will continue through the summer of who are we and how did we get to be who we are, not just as, as folks who live in Oakland, but as um, Christians and as um, United Methodists in our case. But um, going through all those things and kind of trying to figure out what, what makes us so special uh, to God because some days we have a hard time figuring that out. So we are going to look at Exodus um, end of 19 and beginning of 20 this morning. Um, we're just getting into the, the commandments and so um, I'll read the scripture first then we're gonna then, I'm, then it's pop quiz. <laughs> from verse 18 now Mount Sinai was wrapped in smoke because the Lord had descended upon it in fire the smoke went up like the smoke of a kiln while the whole mountain shook violently as the blast of the trumpet grew louder and louder Moses would speak and God would answer him in thunder when the Lord descended upon Mount Sinai to the top of the mountain the Lord summoned Moses to the top of the mountain, and Moses went up. Then the Lord said to Moses, Go down and warn the people not to break through to the Lord to look, otherwise many of them will perish. Even the priests who approach the Lord must consecrate themselves, or the Lord will break out against them. 
Moses said to the Lord, the people are not permitted to come up onto Mount Sinai. For you yourself warned us, saying, set limits around the mountain and keep it holy. The Lord said to him, go down and come up and bring Aaron with you. But do not let either the priest or the people break through to come up to the Lord. Otherwise, he will break out against them. So Moses went down to the people and told him them. Then God spoke all these words. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. So pop quiz time. Where were the Israelites before they're wandering around in the desert aimlessly in circles for 40 years? Babylon. Egypt, right? Yep. So, all that Middle Eastern stuff, yeah. That we that we tend not to know a whole lot of, of what goes in what order, right? I mean, I'm not a geographer, so. But they were in Egypt for for how many years? Four hundred, right? You know, I pick up some pretty good habits in a couple days. Can you imagine the habits they picked up after four hundred years? I'm guessing they weren't all those kind of habits that God necessarily wanted them to have, right? What is, what is the main thing, especially as we hear this, this commandment, this first commandment, no other gods before me, what's the main thing God doesn't like about the habits they had picked up in Egypt? Polytheism. Polytheism. Boy, that's a big word for a Sunday morning, but that is true. Polytheism. So more gods than one. Right? More than one one God. And and to worship in those ways sometimes um, meant that there would be what it depends on what translation you're reading, but graven images, right? The things, the golden calf, the the jewelry that meant certain things. Um, you know, maybe it was um, some folks wore gold bands on their arms, but yet, if we look at um, society, that part of that, if back onto that society, that was uh, folks saying, I've been in bondage. And some folks never took those off, even after God had freed them from Egypt, because why? They hadn't let their hearts become uh, unbound from that, right? They, they were keeping themselves tied to an old life that God said, hey, you did what you had to do while you were there, but now all things are new, right? God calls us to be new in Christ. Um, but I wonder. So it says no other images before, no other gods before God, right? So, so no of those other images that would look like God, nothing that stands before God. I want you to just imagine for a minute, what are some things that keep you from deepening your relationship with God? And I'm not talking about Sunday morning. I'm talking about the other seven, six days and 23 hours of the week, okay? What are the things that keep you from deepening your relationship with God? Imagine that. God says, put those things away, because I am your God, and you are mine. So there are things that get in our way of, I, number one guilt here, and all, I was a little harried when I came in today, and I'm going to tell you why. I let myself convince myself that I needed an extra 20 minutes this morning. <laughs> So you know what the 20 minutes turned into? About 30, 35 minutes, right? I had my time all, all planned out. What, here I am before you preaching this sermon, and they tell us, in school they told us something like 77% of your sermons you will preach for you, and I'm like, no, it's like 99.9 .9 to infinity. I... The first thing I did was not do my devotions, right? Well, I can do those later today. And I can. And it's not going to change that, that my life is focused on God. What it's going to change is how I approach my day. Right? If I, don't, if I don't do those devotions in the morning, my head 
usually goes places it shouldn't go during the day because I don't have that solidness, that, that, that foundation for my day that brings the joy of living in Christ, right? I haven't purposely gone to God and said, why? Why do you want me to do this? How many times do I get answered? Not very many. But I have cleansed my heart, right? I have said, I'm, I'm, I'm second guessing you, God. And God says, but I've asked you to. And I didn't have that time in my day this morning. And so the days that I take that extra 20 minutes and I don't, some days just don't go as smoothly as others, right? So think on the thing that you that you might uh, that might get in the way of God. Uh, Mike and Suzanne, and if I could get a couple of kids here that would help to hand one of these to everybody. Everyone gets one. And I've got a few pins here. I should have grabbed the big bag, but I didn't. Yeah, don't read what's on the opposite side because that's like a communion liturgy or something. But whoever needs some pins. There we go. Oh, so close. You got, can you share with the guys over here? Here's, a, here's one I'll let you guys share. You got some sharers here. Some more over here. We have yeah. Some over here. Uh, yeah. There's a couple over here. You got pins? Okay. We got pins. Regan's. Here's some pins for everybody. Okay. Tear off the bottom of your bulletin. If you, of the first page. Of the first page. If we run out of paper. Do you want these? They're sitting here. Oh, there were some more? Yeah. There are, there are some folks over there need some. Yeah. And then I'm going to pass right on that piece of paper the thing that stands between you and a, di different, uh, a deeper relationship with God. It can be one word. It can be a sentence. It's only you and God are the only ones who are going to see that. You and God. And then stick them in that box and keep passing it around. So while you're concentrating on that, imagine what it might be that these Egyptians are feeling as they're being told, no other gods before me. Is that scary to them? How many generations had had no one, no one but God, or but these other gods in their life? No traditions but the Egyptian traditions, because some of the uh, Israelite traditions were lost in the midst of their slavery, right? Often in liturgy, we hear that we don't want to be a slave to sin and death. Right? Instead, we want to live a life for God. We want to live a life that, um, that is honoring God, that is um, obedient to God, that is a witness to who and what God has been in our lives. So if we don't have those things, then it's really hard to, um, to continue to be the people of God. So I, it doesn't matter. Let's see, who's our youngest one here is over there. What's the youngest ones? How old are you? Are you six? Anybody younger than six? Oh, is up oh, two? Are you two? Three. Three, four. Four, three, four, three, four, four. We've got four. Anybody younger? Two. We got a two-year-old. Okay, so whether you're two, and I hate to ask this question, is there anybody over 95? 
deepen our faith, to deepen our relationship with God, with Christ, to be more in tune to the Holy Spirit, to do the things that we are called to do in the ways that we are called to be obedient. Now, the Israelites found out the hard way, right? Because they got in pretty deep trouble. And I have to say that, I don't know about you guys, my 20s and 30s were kind of like, um, it felt, it felt a whole lot like the Israelites going in circles in my faith life, you know. You know, that was only like a, a four-day trip, right, by foot. It took 40 years. But why did it take 40 years? What was the reason? Because Moses disobeyed God and did not believe that he could produce the water as a rock. So God said that all generations that have been let out of Egypt could not survive until the new generation that wouldn't have God as their God, right? <laughs> this is why I don't have to preach a whole lot. <laughs> so, but that is true, right? So God wants us to wander around until we're decided that we're going to be committed to him, right? Until we find out what that is. Now, there... There are some folks who say that um, that's the reason some uh, we have a great flood of folks. There is one. There is there is one. Uh, oh, there's as many theologians and and social social workers. You know those who uh, work with the social aspect of our of our culture that say one of the reasons that folks are moving away from the church. One of the reasons is because when do we call on God? When we're in trouble, right? I mean, hopefully we're doing some praise and thanksgiving, but the big one is when we're in trouble, when we hurt, when, when we don't know where to turn, when we have no answers and we're like, eh, I guess it wouldn't hurt, you know, to throw up a prayer. Those are the times when we reach out to God. And there is a camp in the great social, social world of culture that says the reason, especially in America, that folks are moving away is because we have not had that period for 70 years. That period, you know, the last world war uh, was, that was the pinnacle of faith in the United States. And ever since then, it's been a slow, very slow trickle down. Now, we had a big jump off the cliff, yeah. But it's been a very slow trickle down since then. So, I hate to say this, folks, but maybe we should be praying for some strife. I don't know. Nah. <laughs> How about instead, if we give our praise and thanksgiving to God? Because that's what the Israelites ended up doing, right? They said, okay, Moses has showed us what a life of faith is. Even, even when he struggled with his belief, even when he, when he didn't know what was coming next, he kept offering us God. How many folks in your life do you know who are wandering in circles in a desert? And how are you offering God to them? How is that working in your life? Now... There's just one more thing to do. I'm all about flames. What was something that the Israelites did do for God? How was one way that they showed their love and appreciation to God? In a sacrifice, right? Well, there's no animal blood involved in this one. But we're going to set this right down here. And we're going to offer all the things that keep us from God back to God in an incense. 
Okay? And incense of the burning of the things that keep us away from the same God that we claim, the same God that we pull away from when things are going well, the same God that some days we have a lot of problems staying in tune with, right? Because, <laughs> no breeze right now, please. Um, the Holy Spirit needs to hold off for just a minute before its breeze comes through here. But this is an offering to God. The things that keep us away from God. Offering it back up to God and saying, this is keeping me away from you. Help me to make you number one again. Help you, help me to make you number one, not just on the days I'm running on time, right? And not just on the good day, on the bad days, but on the good days. Let me reach out to you and let me hear your word. Hear your scripture. Hear the, your voice in my as a response to my prayer. This is an incense as our gift to God. Now, while that while that is headed up to God, let's pray. Dear Lord, we offer these things to you in prayer. We offer them to you to get a deeper relationship with you. We ask for your help. Your help in moving us from the people that let other things get in the way to the people that lean on you on all days, who worship you all days, who cry out in joy to you every day, who cries out to you in pain and hurt every day. Lord, let us live our life fully and completely with you in constant conversation, in times of intense prayer, whether that be as we lay on our faces in deep despair or as we lift our hands to you in great joy. Might the tears that you cry for, the lot, for our misbehaving, might they become a balm to us a healing power that brings us closer to you each and every day. And all God's children said, Amen. Amen. I think that's you, Mike. Mm -hmm. As we get ready to uh, come into the meal, we have our offering buckets that are over here. And the offering goes to the RCA. The RCA is uh, for gas cards to buy those for people who uh, are need to uh, travel to the doctors for those with cancer and chemo, uh, being able to have a little extra funding to be able to get there. Uh, it is for emergencies. Uh, we, we use that in our communities to help the people. And so that's what the offering here will be for. Uh, all the things that the RCA, uh, the Riverside Church Association, is able to, to do for others. So let us pray. The Lord said, I am the Lord your God. I brought you out of Egypt. That is the land where you were slaves. Do not put any other gods in place of me. O oh Lord, we trust you and confess that every precious gift we hold comes from you. O oh Lord, we offer you our possessions and our positions in this world. Help us to take joy in your gifts with all thanksgiving and praise. Amen. Let us sing together. We have a story to tell to the nation. The story to tell to the nations that will turn
into our meal a little easier. Let's go ahead and bless our meal now. Lord, we praise and thank you for this gorgeous day to meet together, to fellowship in your name, to, to uh, eat fabulous food. We ask that, um, that the hands that prepared this food might be blessed, that those who um, take of it might be nourished, might be given strength to continue to be yours in this world that is so often not listening to your commands. Lord, remind us that you are first, you are only, and you are ours. All this we pray in your holy name, amen. Now please join me in the benediction. Hallelujah, oh my soul, praise God. All my life long, I'll praise God singing songs to my God as I live. Don't put your life in the hands of experts who know nothing of life, of salvation. Mere humans don't have what it takes. When they die, their projects die with them. Instead, get help from the God of Jacob. Put your hope in God and know real blessing. God made sky and soil and all the fish in it, the sea and all the fish in it. He always does what he says. He defends the wronged. He feeds the hungry. God frees prisoners. He gives sight to the blind. He lifts up the fallen. God loves good people, protects strangers, takes the side of the orphans and widows, but makes short work of the wicked. God's in charge always. Zion God is God for good. Hallelujah. One more time like you mean it. Hallelujah. Go from this place knowing that God claims you and yearns for you to claim him, not just as one more thing, but as the God in your life. Keep working. Keep praying until he is the only God in your life. Go forth with God's promises secure in your heart and soul. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. 
Amen. Let's eat. So if everybody would, <laughs> reminder that the offering buckets are up here. Um, if you have things to get, we'll take about 10 or 15 minutes here to kind of get a rearranged and we'll do a little all call when it's time to start through the line. <coughs> oh. Oh, yes, and so we have hot items here as well as your plates and those things. We have salad-y type things over here, and we have desserts at this table. So you'll kind of do a horseshoe. Yeah. Okay, and, and Chris, I know, I, I don't know why it was in Chris. Cindy will collect all the bulletins and she'll make sure they get to the water cycle. Thank you. Which one is which? They're both RCA. <laughs> Thanks so much for joining us, everybody, and we look forward to seeing you next Sunday at your own church. We'll talk to you soon. Bye.